filaments, resin, powder. There are many different 3D printing technologies, but which one's best suited for thermoforming applications? Hello, I'm Agustin from Meiku, and in this fourth video of our series on 3D printing and thermoforming, we will compare the three most popular 3D printing technologies, which are FDM, SLA, and SLS. We are in this fab lab and showroom located at Universidad Francisco de Vitoria in Madrid, where some of the best prototyping and manufacturing technologies are used every day. In our previous videos, we've explored each technology and how to make thermoforming templates with them. You can find links to those videos in the description below. But now it's time to compare these three technologies, so let's get started. First, let's do a very short recap on how each one of these technologies work and what we are making with them. FDM 3D printing uses a continuous filament of plastic material to make 3D objects, melting and extruding the material layer by layer, building the objects from the bottom up. SLA 3D printing is a type of resin 3D printing in which a light source, a laser or projection polymerizes a photosensitive resin. And SLS 3D printing is a 3D printing technology that uses a high-powered laser to fuse small particles of plastic powder together. With these technologies and many others, we are making thermoforming templates or tools, which are the objects you insert into a thermoforming machine and give a plastic sheet a specific shape. Now that we know about each technology, let's see how they perform when making thermoforming templates. Let's start by talking about the templates made with each technology. First, we have the surface finish. FDM templates will come with a layered surface texture on the sides and also a line texture on the top and bottom. SLA templates usually provide a very accurate surface finish with almost invisible layer lines. Some imperfections can also be found where the support structure was placed, which is usually on the bottom part of the template. SLS templates have a grainy texture on all the surface, but they don't have any support material imperfections because this technology doesn't require the use of any support materials. And hey, all templates, no matter how they were made, can be post-processed to improve the surface finish. You can sand them, polish them, or coat them. And now, what level of detail can be achieved with each technology? Let's see some examples with very small text and a unique surface pattern. This is very important as the Mako multiplier can capture details even smaller than the ones we are using as an example. FDM 3D printing offers a good quality on small features, but struggles a little bit more with tiny text or textures, at least on the horizontal surfaces. If you use FDM 3D printing, you can use a smaller nozzle or increase the text size. SLA 3D printing offers an exceptional level of detail on both text and textures or surface patterns thanks to its technology. SLS 3D printing offers a consistent level of detail on all axes, but due to the grainy surface texture and the minimum feature size, some details such as very, very small text may be lost or difficult to read. What about the materials used to 3D print all these templates? For FDM 3D printing, we recommend using materials such as nylon or composites that include carbon fiber. When it comes to resins, most standard ones, like clear or gray ones, work for early prototypes, but we recommend high temperature or rigid resins for final templates. For SLS, we recommend using the default material, which is PA12 or Nylon 12, as it has some very good properties that make it ideal for thermoforming applications. Now, let's talk about the lifespan of a template. The design and 3D printing settings will determine the template's useful lifespan. However, there are some things worth mentioning if you want to use the same templates over and over again. FDM templates require a thick shell and a high infill density. Due to the layered surface, they are more difficult to demold, so you may want to increase the draft angle or use a release agent. 
SLA templates demold better than FDM templates, but they may warp or even crack over time if you use the standard grey or clear resins. It's good for prototypes, but high temperature resins are better for small batch production. When it comes to reusability, SLS templates offer an incredible performance thanks to the material properties. Now it's time to talk about the equipment itself, as it will also determine what workflow you choose when making templates. When it comes to equipment cost, there are many things you should consider. FDM 3D printing is the most popular technology of the three. There are entry-level 3D printers for 300 euros or dollars and more professional equipment for over a thousand dollars or euros. What really matters is the 3D printer compatibility with engineering materials suitable for thermoforming applications such as nylon or carbon fiber composites. The same happens with SLA 3D printing. It has a similar price range and the material compatibility is essential. With this technology, you also want to consider that you will probably want to buy a cleaning and curing station, which has an extra cost, but yes, it heavily improves the use experience. When it comes to SLS 3D printing, this technology plays in a different league. It's an industrial technology and it comes with an industrial price tag. It's a great technology for template manufacturing and thankfully many companies that offer 3D printing services have SLS in their portfolio. What about the workflow? Is it the same to make a template using filaments, resin and powder? Absolutely not. Let's take a look. FDM is pretty straightforward. If the part is properly designed and doesn't have support material, you simply remove the part from the 3D printer and it's ready to use on the Mako multiplier. SLA parts need to be cleaned using isopropyl alcohol and then cured with UV light. You can do this almost manually or using a cleaning and curing station, which will take extra space and time. SLS parts come out of the 3D printer covered by powder. You need to clean the parts manually or using an automated process, which will also require additional space and time. Now that we've compared the template quality and talked about the equipment cost and workflows, it's time for the big question. What is the best technology to make thermoforming templates? The answer is, it depends. I know it's a very disappointing answer, but don't worry, here are some of the applications or scenarios in which I recommend each technology. When would I use FDM 3D printing? First, for early prototyping, this technology is so straightforward and fast that it's perfect when you are defining the overall shape and size of a part. I would also use it for large and simple templates. The material cost can be considerably lower compared to other technologies. And then I would also use it for in-house testing. The lack of post-processing makes it a great technology to have in your office next to the multiplier. What about SLA 3D printing? As expected, I would use it for designs that require a super high level of detail, like small text or a detailed surface texture. Then I would also use it if I wanted to make transparent parts. On top of using a transparent material like PETG or PMMA, you need to have a template with a very smooth surface finish and there's where SLA 3D printing comes in. I would also use it for those designs that feature snap fits or other design elements that require perfect tolerances. Then SLA 3D printing works great in the food and chocolate industries. Why? Because it allows for highly detailed transparent mold creation. And last we have SLS 3D printing. When should you consider using this industrial technology? As mentioned before, SLS templates are really strong and can have a very long lifespan. For that reason, I recommend it to make templates that will be used for small batch production. And then it's recommended if you are making templates with very complex geometries. SLS 3D printing works great when making complex geometries as the parts don't require any support materials. 
Also, templates will be strong and slightly flexible, meaning it's less likely that they will be damaged during the demolding process. As you can see, each technology offers unique benefits. The decision to use one or another will be determined by the projects you are working on and the equipment you already have. I invite you to watch our videos and guides on 3D printing and thermoforming. You can find the links in the description below and also in the learn section of our website. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next video.